Caught myself a pair of JBL Flip 5s. I'm gonna say now, this video is more about nailing the differences between the Flip 5 and the Flip 4, and where we are with the Flip 5. Future video will be a pair of Flip 5s. Just to give you a heads up, yes, it does sound a lot better to me, a pair than, which we'll find out in this video, my thoughts on it as a single. So whatever I say in this video about how I find it as, as a single, it does make sense to buy a pair of these. I will get that in another video. Just to quickly go over an overview of this speaker before I get into the nitty gritty. What do you get with it? Well, you do get this polystyrene protective case. So that's very trendy. And you can take that anywhere because it's got a handle. Well, it doesn't have a handle, so you can't really take it anywhere. But you do get a quick start guide. It's far more awkward, isn't it, to download it off the internet. So that's always handy to have a quick start guide, a um, couple of warranty bits, and you do get USB-C. Yes, it is finally USB-C. That is a welcome thing to have in a speaker. I will also say it's not just USB-C, but they're actually taking a little bit of advantage of it. It charges at five volts, three amps, as opposed to the 2.3 amps of I'm holding at the moment the Flip 4. So it does actually not just have the more handy USB-C input, it does have faster charging than the old one. It does also have a bigger battery. 4,800 milliamp hours in the new one, 3,000 milliamp hours in the old one. When I say the old one, the Flip 4. I do also have the Flip 3, and I do have a pair of the Flip 3s. And there will be a little bit of that in this video. In terms of battery life, I did get six hours, 45 minutes at maximum. Used to reckon on about four hours for the JBL Charge 4. So that's good. It's a bigger battery, a bit more battery life. That's quite a big improvement. Uh, you know, basically more than a 50% increase in battery capacity. It is still Bluetooth 4.2. It isn't Bluetooth 5, which you would like on a modern speaker. It does bring connectivity improvements. However, it is still a little bit better in the connectivity than the JBL Flip 4 because the JBL Flip 4 was a maximum of 9 decibel milliwatts. The JBL Flip 5 is a maximum of 11 decibel milliwatts. So even though it's not Bluetooth 5, there is a little bit improvement in its Bluetooth connectivity. They have pulled a lot of features. So you used to get a speakerphone to get voice assistant integration. You no longer get voice assistant integration. You used to get an auxiliary input if you want to connect to a device that hasn't got Bluetooth you're now kind of stuck. There is no auxiliary input. I don't know if that was for saving on money on their end or because they now have an uncovered USB-C charging port. Uh, I have to say it is handy not having the flippy thing, which I always found a little bit awkward to get my fingers into. Um, but it does leave it a bit exposed and I'm wondering if actually they're quite happy that that's going to be waterproof, sandproof but the auxiliary may have been a bit more of a problem. I don't know. That's giving JBL the benefit of a doubt, which <laughs> maybe isn't really there. On paper, 16 watts. It's now a 20 watt speaker, but yes, it is now a, again, a mono speaker. Whereas the Flip 4, the Flip 3s were stereo speakers. It's now becoming very old fashioned to have a stereo speaker if you work at JBL anyway. So you now have an off-centered, it's on the left, oval shaped driver. It's actually 44 millimeters by 80 millimeters, whereas it was two 40 millimeter drivers on the JBL Flip 4. So mono on the new one, stereo on the old one. They are both IPX7. It sounds good on paper. Submerge it for up to 30 minutes and you're thinking, well, I can play that while I'm in the swimming pool. So can you actually play this while you're in the swimming pool? <laughs> So no, although the Flip 5 does float and the Flip 4 didn't, 
it doesn't play properly. <laughs> Even though the drivers are nicely faced up, it still doesn't handle the water well. It doesn't play like it should do. You know, if there was, wasn't submerged, actually, it's, it doesn't sound good at all. I would say unusable. If you're thinking, well, that's good, it'll float and I can listen to it in the swim pool. No, no, no. JBL don't seem to care about compatibility between generations of their speakers. Connect on the Flip 3, Connect Plus on the Flip 4. You cannot connect a Connect to a Connect Plus. And I've done it again. It's Party Booster. You can only connect Party Booster to other Party Booster speakers. Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to anybody other than JBL. The whole point that you can build up a collection of JBL speakers and connect them all, you, you, well, it's gone. There is, they, it's not gonna happen. They are just gonna change the feature on each model. And I've seen people say, yeah, but they upgrade it later. Well, they only upgraded some of the Connect speakers to Connect Plus. Most of the speakers remained Connect. So there's no reason to think any or many of the Connect Plus speakers will be upgraded to Party Booster. So at the moment, you can only connect that to other Flip 5 speakers. It's a little bit heavier, 540 grams, 515 grams. And it's also slightly bigger, slightly taller. So, in use, I do have some gripes. It sits like that, angled slightly up. Your, all your controls are on the opposite side. You are not going to be able to see or get to anything if you're sitting in front of it having a nice relax. Listen, on the very top, well, when I say the top, the rear top, you have your volume up, volume down, your play, pause, and forward button. So, hit it once, play, pause, hit it twice, fast forward. You then have your party booster button. My gripe about that is there is no light. Uh, that's got a dead battery, I'll show you on this one. If I turn it on, and by the way, it may be a small point, I actually find the power button awkward to use on this new Flip 5. It takes a significant more pressure than it does on the Flip 4 to turn it on and off. It may, may sound like a bit nonsense, but I've actually found that, you know, a bit of a peeve. So, I've, on the JBL Flip 4, you go to put the Connect Plus button on. I'll turn that one on, it'll help. It lights up. I can see that that is in Connect Plus mode. And it matters if you've got several speakers and you're trying to get them all connected and want to make sure they're all on, you can see it's on. On the Flip 5, if I press the Party Booster button, I do get a sound on and off, but come back five minutes later and I can't quite remember if it's on and off or if it's turned itself off. I've got no way of knowing. There is no light now. They've saved money on the light behind the power booster button. Uh, you can no longer see if it's on or off. Then right underneath you've got your power button and your Bluetooth. And you've also got, some people are liking, this single power level to tell me what the power level is. At the moment it's telling me it's 100%. I'll show you what it does on this one that's dead. I'll give you a heads up, it's going to come on red and then turn itself off when it's flashing red. But there's not, you, it's hard to see levels in between. So I can see if it's, you know, it's under 50 or if it's 20 or if it's 100. But the graduations are not easy to see, although, you know, that is a nice big light. Whereas on the Flip 4, if I want to know where I am power level wise, I've got five LEDs. So there's no messing about, I know exactly where I am on the actual level whether it's a, a 180, 60, 50, whatever, I found that I think five LEDs work better for me, but it looks flashier, I'll give you that on the Flip 5. And then of course you've got the exposed USB-C port. But, you know, still more or less looking like the Flip 4 and still has this cylindrical shape. Well, I personally like, you know, it's about one of the few things JBL have got going for them at the moment, because they're pulling all the features as they bring out new speakers, is it is quite a nice form factor. And just to point out, the cord is now shorter than it was before. <laughs> if you've got big hands and you found you couldn't get your hand in that one on the Flip 4, you certainly won't be doing that on the Flip 5. So actually get into some listening. Let's actually find out what the Flip 5 is all about. The first thing I want to know is, what does it do as you got the volume steps? Because it really matters because on a lot of these speakers, the sound changes a hell of a lot as you go up the volume scale most notably as the bass comes off, but you know, it can change in other ways too. So yes, I do think you need to test these all the way up the volume scale to see exactly 
what you're gonna get at each volume. So this is my test. Quickly showing you what happens when you go up the volume steps. And you'll notice everything will be relative to just over the four kilohertz mark, just around here. 20%, still no real change, 27%. It's still bass heavy, as you can see. The bass peak is still the highest peak. All on the frequency response, 33%. 40%, 47%, no real change, 53%, 60%, and then we see the bass rolling off. Just to point out, it's not really rolling off in the true sense. What you will see is it maxes at around 86 dB on this particular measurement, and that's where it stays. The rest of the frequency is getting pushed as you go up the volume scale, 60%, 66%, and it's coming off relative, oh, just over that four kilohertz mark. It's all hinging on that, 73%, 80%. You're really losing all of that bass now. What was a bass heavy peak is now gone. So it's running off from as high as the 600 hertz. If you watch it coming off, it's all coming down to 50-ish, 300 hertz mark now, 87%. Looking at that peak, just over 96 dB, 100 hertz, now 10 decibels down, 93%, it's nearer 14 decibels down, and at maximum volume, nowhere to be seen. So, you know, we can't expect that's what's going to happen. As you got the volume scale, the bass is going to drop off on the Flip 5. It's going to drop off after 60% and a lot more after about 75% in line with a lot of other speakers. So what is the frequency response? I know officially what it's rated at, but they don't specify plus and minus three decibels, so I'll do my own little personal testing. So a look at the frequency response for the JBL Flip 5, 53% volume. And just for fun, I've thrown in the Flip 4 and the Flip 3. We already know the Flip 5 strongest in the bass around this volume level. If we look at the peak for the Flip 5, which is red, and it's just above 82 decibels. So if we're looking for the frequency response, plus or minus three decibels, it's gonna be just above the 76 mark. As you can see, it's, it's dipping a little bit below that mark, around 800 hertz. So if we ignore that, we're still getting a massive roll off, eight kilohertz. So strictly speaking, on my measurement, so as far as I'm personally concerned, the frequency response for the Flip 5 is gonna be around 60 hertz to 8 kilohertz. Officially, it's 65 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Well, they rate, they rate all their speakers at 20 kilohertz uh, JBL, and never specify plus or minus three decibels, so you can take that with a pinch of salt. However you look at it, it's clearly a big roll off after that eight kilohertz. You are losing all that high end, strictly speaking, the whole of the brilliance range. So the Flip 5 clearly tuned, heavy bass. They don't care about the mids, there are no mids, basically, it's dropping away between 250 and about 1800 hertz. It's a big dip. And then you've got your peaks at two and a half kilohertz and just over four kilohertz. That happens to be the upper mid range. They'll add a little bit of brightness to the sound. So all they're really concerned about, as you can see, is big punchy bass. And let's add in a bit <laughs> at the high end, you know, just to uh, balance it out a bit. Looking directly at the Flip 5 versus the Flip 4, Flip 4 being the brown line, you can clearly see how much more bass heavy the Flip 5 is playing at the same volume. I'm talking like three decibels more bass. However, the Flip 4 does have a bit more at the high end and does not roll off quite as heavy as the Flip 5. And it actually has a bit of a peak, moving towards around 13 kilohertz. So it's gonna be a little bit brighter, it's gonna have a little bit more sparkle, but they both have almost no low mids to mids. This is not a speaker for people who love their mid range. But the difference between the Flip 4 and the Flip 5, from here, looking at the frequency response, you will expect to have a more bass heavy speaker in the Flip 5. The Flip 4 will have a little bit more in the high end, and you'd have to decide what you prefer. Just for kicks, you've got the Flip 3 there. And actually, while it can't match the bass of the two newer speakers, does have a, you know, a big 100 hertz peak. It's a bit flatter. You can see that. Now if I actually adjust them so they have the same peaks, so they're all peaking around 82 decibels. 
plus or minus three decibels, strictly speaking, 76 decibels. The flip four going well below that. So you can say, if you only take the high, you look at the high end, the flip five does not have a high end. It is rolling right off from about eight kilohertz. I mean, they're not even pretending to try and balance it there at the, at the end. So the, the red line is the flip five rolling off. The brown is the flip four doesn't roll off and then actually has a bit of a peak at 13 kilohertz. So if you want to take in the high end, it's flatter. But if you just take in strictly plus or minus three decibels, well, the mid range is below that. The flip five is going to be flatter. Now, as I keep saying, I've thrown in the flip three just to show you, if you forget you know, lower mid bass, it's actually the flattest frequency response. It shows you where JBL are going more and more in their tuning of their speakers. It's simply all they're going to try and do is give you bass punch, a little bit of highs, and they don't care about anything else. Uh, flip three, the black line, it's within plus or minus three decibels, all the way up to 16 kilohertz. So in strict measurement terms, the flip three was and is still the flattest of these three speakers. Obviously it doesn't have the bass of the others. Just to give you a quick sample, what that means in reality is a quick comparison. Just to show you, it doesn't matter if you use test tones or an actual track, the differences are the same. Flip 5, 53% volume, and by the way, I've played the Flip 3 at 60% to match the volume levels of the Flip 4 and the Flip 5. As you can see, the Flip 5, 2 decibels heavier in the bass, playing at the same volume than the Flip 4. But the Flip 4 has a high end missing on the Flip 5. So really, it's a matter of what you prefer the low end or the high end, a bit of clarity or a bit more bass punch in the Flip 3, actually stronger, albeit I'm playing at 60% rather than 53%, so the overall volumes are matched. Well, it's actually slightly louder, the Flip 3, at 60%. You've got stronger mids and highs. You just don't have the bass. The bass is actually below the mids. So neither the Flip 5 or the Flip 4 are mid-lovers speakers. They are a classic V-shape. You're getting your bass, you're getting some high end for clarity, some clarity, you're not getting anything else in between. For a lot of people, that is enough. Rated to go down to about 65 hertz. I actually rated it a little bit lower, around 60 hertz. It does uh, play well in the bass, you know, and that's, that's, let's face it, they've given everything now to the bass on this speaker, but there are no mids. So it does play down to about 60 hertz. That is really decent for this size. That is impressive. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not denying that in any way at all. And it improves on the Flip 4. But of course the Flip 4 has a better high end. It extends further. There is a big roll off on the Flip 5. So it's a small speaker. You may well be playing this at low volumes and close up. How's it gonna sound? This is my 20% test. The back and forth Has got me so messed up Don't ignore The signs we've had enough of the whole damn thing that we got going You hold the strings without me knowing Why do I have to 
definitely has a big advantage at the lower volumes. If you look at around the 1000 hertz mark, both speakers are around minus 30 decibels. Flip 5, flip 4. But look at the bass. The flip 5 is 5 decibels heavier at 66 hertz. The difference is huge. Definitely for a low level listen. If bass and a bit of meat is your criteria, the flip 5 wipes the floor with the flip 4. However, I have to point out again, the Flip 4 does have the better highs. The Flip 5 falling off a cliff in terms of highs from about 12,000 hertz. The Flip 4 extending much further. So I have to say, I found it quite impressive. Uh, for a close up, listen, at low volume, they certainly kept a lot of punch at that low volume. It does sound nicer than the Flip 4, you know. It's more note, it's stereo, but there is a lack of body on the Flip 4 at these volume levels that you do get in the JBL Flip 5. Now that sound does not spread all that particularly well. And I am saying for a close up listen, low volume, you know, at night you've got neighbors. It's quite impressive, actually. I think it sounds quite nice. What about at louder volumes? Well, we know after about 60% that bass starts dropping off. Does it lose its advantage? So I did a test at 66% volume. Inside the upside down For a minute 
As we already knew, Flip 5 has more bass, even at 66% where the bass starts rolling off a little bit. It's nearly two decibels stronger in that bass peak than the Flip 4, but the Flip 4 has better upper mids and more extended highs. Flip 5 cutting off pretty rapidly, falling off a cliff around 13,000 hertz. Flip 4 extending out to about 18,000 hertz, stronger in the upper mids. So, louder volumes is closer. It's really going to come down to personal taste. They go about as loud as each other as you got the volume scale. But the Flip 5 has the bass and the Flip 4 has more refined trebles, more defined trebles, more of a, more of a high end. It extends further. Now, what in reality that means to me when I'm listening at these sort of volume levels, you know, loudest volume levels, vocals start to become a bit receded, a bit distant. And that's a big difference for me with the JBL Flip 4. The vocals do stand out at louder volumes. They don't on the Flip 5. But yes, the body you get from the extra bass slam on the Flip 5, yeah, probably makes up for that. However, you know, if you're not a bass head and you do like your vocals to pop and you do like a bit more definition, you probably still prefer the JBL Flip 4 and you will take advantage of the stereo. So if you really, really, really push them, maximum volume. <laughs> Very much as expected, the actual sound levels between the Flip 4 and the Flip 5 are very similar. It's the sound signature that is different. So in terms of absolute volume levels, the Flip 5 has a slight edge on average across the whole frequency range, 0.4 decibels louder. So imperceptible really. In terms of absolute peaks, basically the same, 0.3 decibels louder. It's in the sound signature, it's in the bass where the difference is. The Flip 5, 1.8 decibels louder in the bass at absolute maximum volumes. So that's going to come over very much in your listening. 
However, again, flip four having the best highs, flip five just having that big bass and a big roll off at the high end. Very different sound signatures. So maximum volume, 20 watts versus the 16 watts of the flip four. Probably not the difference we're expecting. So a slight, slight, probably you couldn't perceptibly hear that advantage for the flip fiver over the flip four. The sound signature is still the difference between the two is high ends, more clarity, more low end, more punch on the flip five. It's going to be a matter of taste. It's not going to be a deal breaker. If you want something that goes significantly louder than the flip four, it's not going to go significantly louder, but you may think it does because of the bass lamb. However, you take the whole of the frequency range, they go about as loud as each other. About. It's a, it's a hair's breadth more for the flip five. And I tend to actually say at maximum volumes, the flip three is not actually that far behind. Um, on for an average 17 minus 17.7, less than a decibel behind the flip five but of course there is no bass in the flip three it's a totally different sound but if we're just talking about pure loudness flip three is not that far behind and actually take away the bass it's a flatter frequency response so yeah i did say i'm going to do the flip five and other comparisons in another video uh, if i have time to do it well i will do it <laughs> just a matter of when i do it i have had a listening stereo i do think actually it does make sense if you're thinking, shall I get one or two? It does sound better. It does sound probably twice as good or more as a pair. You get the stereo and you get quite an impressive punch when you add two of these flip fives, I must say. So that's for another video and thank you for watching. UK.